Hi everyone and welcome to Flourish Sussex online tutorials. Today we're going to be talking all about flowers <laughs> but this is this is for anyone who's just sort of starting out who you might have just you don't know anything really about flowers you like them maybe you know some roses and daffodils and all that but you're not really sure about anything else and that's completely fine we all need to start somewhere and at the moment we've got quite a lot of time um, to sort of think about new things so if you've ever wondered about floristry as a hobby um, just now's the time to do it so I think this is a really good starting um, place um, and I think what you should do if you're embarking on a new hobby or possibly a career change and you're looking at floristry the number one thing I think that is a really is a good idea is to buy a book um, if you don't know much about flower variety um, just maybe go online have a look at Amazon type in sort of floristry and you'll get a load of different sort of books that are out there these are some of my favorite ones I'm going to share with you today so whenever I talk to my students I'm, I'm always recommending new books we've obviously got Instagram which is great um, it, it's a lovely visual guide but if you kind of want to sort of read a bit more about what inspires these floral designers or how they actually create these arrangements. Um, books just give you that bit of an extra depth. So I'm gonna share two of my favorite books. This one is called The Flower Fix. It's by Anna Potter of Swallows and Dansoms. Um, I, I, love, I love Anna's work. It's, um, it's very seasonal, which I love, and I'll come on to talk about that a bit more in a minute. Um, and it's, she uses a lot of very earthy tones. So nothing's too bright. Everything is very, very much inspired by the garden, which again is a look that I, that I really love. And this book, it's not a step two guide at all, but it's more just of a lovely journey of her, of her idea process. I love these pages. It um, shows a lot about kind of um, her way of thinking and different sort of color and what she's inspired by um, and how she goes on to then create these, these displays. But it's a lovely way to kind of get to know different flower varieties because you'll you'll notice the more sort of floral designers you follow you can see that they have a few variety of flowers that they use a lot i think we all do i think we get to certain seasons and we're like yes let's um let's get the ranunculus in or, or let's get this in you have your go-to flowers um so you sort of get to get to learn what they like this is an earl grey rose which i know that anna uses um, a lot in her work so it's a lovely book to kind of just um, give you an introduction to everything and um, you know learn a bit about styling as well. She has a few at the back. I bought two two copies of these because one I rip apart and, and create mood boards, but um, and another one I just keep on the side to have a look at. So at the book at the back of the book, she has a few different uh, mechanics, but it's a really lovely one just to kind of get a sense. Of what floristry can be um, for, because for me floristry is an art form um, you know it's not about cellophane you know, chrysanthemums wrapped with poly ribbon you know that's one side of the industry but the majority of the industry is a visually stunning beautiful um, painting basically and I would say that Anna is at the top of the industry so it's a really great great book to um, to have another one is um, by Kiana Underwood of Tulip Pinot Design Colour Me Floral. This is much brighter, so if you love you love colour and really love that sort of um, high impact displays, this is the one for you. And this is actually a step by step guide. So again, it's a great one. Um, a great one to have a look at to see how she goes about creating her masterpieces. I think they're absolutely beautiful. She's done these all um, in sort of monochromatic displays. So uh, we've got the all green one here, sort of pinks, but she's a big fan of using the, um, the floral frog pin. So if you want to go on to our um, talk about different types of um, mechanics to use instead of floral foam. I'll discuss more about the pin there, but it's a really lovely one. And let's just get, and as you can see on this purple color palette, 
what she does as well is she sort of talks about the different kind of colours that are in sort of one palette. So we've obviously got the purples here, but you've got lilac and you've got violet and you've got wine and all of those different colours. So it kind of gives you an introduction of, of, of colour and working with them. But it's a lovely one to sort of look at different textures and every single page is an art form. So I would say like buy some books just to get to grips with people's different styles, different types of arrangements that are out, that are out there. But if you're if you're you know if you're on a budget and you're you know you can't at the moment splash out on books, the one book I would get is a flower cut, cutting book. This is the one that I give to all my students that do our foundation course for beginners. There are loads of cut flower books out there, but I do find this one a really really good one. This is by the Putin um, guys who are based in New York. Um, not only is it a really beautiful book. Like the photographs are lovely. Um, on each page it tells you exactly the name, so with flowers we have a common name and a Latin name, so this tells you both and the variety as well that's photographed and not many cut flower um, guidebooks do that. This has loads of flowers in here so it's quite nice to sort of actually see the name of the flowers. Um, it says about when it's available as well, anything else? Um, and it also talks about whether it's a, a filler flower or a focal flower. So in the floristry industry, we talk about focal flowers, fill, secondary flowers and filler flowers. Focal flowers are your main event of your piece. So things like roses, peonies, sort of big, um, the main event. Secondary flowers are more maybe smaller ones, smaller flowers that are in the background. So maybe like tulips. Um, Companiola, and anything that sort of is adding to your piece and you're going to notice, but it's just slightly more in the background. Filler flowers, um, sea lavender here that I've got, aster, um, just wax flower, much smaller flowers that act just as kind of the background, but that brings it all together. And then obviously your foliage is um, self-explanatory. Um, but as you can see here, it sort of, it coordinates or splits everything up, I should say, into colours. A really beautiful book. And then at the background, the background, the back of the book, which I love, it's space to write notes in. And then also this, which I think is really nice. They're kind of like little labels that you can take out. Um, so if you're, if you really want to like test yourself, you can take them out and create a little test to learn the names of them. But it's a great one to kind of um, improve your knowledge and get learning about the different flowers and varieties that are available. So throughout the seasons, as I mentioned earlier, everyone kind of tends to have those flowers that they really go to. So in the winter, healy balls for me are, are a must. I love flowers that have a lovely flower movement. And what I mean by that is lots of flowers, let's take this, have a lovely kind of curve to their stem. And unlike more traditional floristry, where all the arrangements are very, very tightly put together and all of that lovely movement is lost, I tend to work in a way where I go with the movement of the flowers. So when I'm creating an urn display, if I was creating something in this, I would want there to be sort of some cascading flowers coming over and that's following the movement of, of the flowers. So something like heliobores, which have like a natural droop, I would, I'd, I'd love to use them in this because they would come cascading over. And then something really tall up here, some lovely branches or something, would give me that height. So in the winter, healy balls are kind of my must have. Um, so spring, I always advise people to work with seasonal flowers. So, you know, if you have brides that are saying, oh, I want to have peonies in winter and you'd be like, well, I could probably get them in, you know, at, at some point, but they wouldn't be what we're all visualising. They'd be really tight little balls. So it's cheaper, it's better for the environment if we buy seasonally. So when it comes to spring, I love bulbs and bulb kind of flowers and tulips. I just love. Um, there are loads of amazing ones I've discovered brownies by uh, VPI Roses, which are a lovely toned brown tulip that they've developed, which is absolutely beautiful. And again, 
tulips have got that lovely kind of soft stem so they've got that that wonderful movement so that's definitely um, a must for me um, in springtime summer garden roses english garden roses i think are just so beautiful all those lovely layers and of course peonies as well are a firm favorite of so many autumn i just think autumn is like an artist's just dream palette like the colors are just amazing so i i actually whenever i think about autumn i think of just m more than actual flowers just kind of fruit branches and orange palettes and orange leaves and i try to sort of work with those colors a lot to um to bring that into my work so that's kind of my sort of must-haves throughout the year but obviously there are so there are so many different kinds but when i see those flowers in the auction i'm always like yes i'm definitely going to have some of those in my work um and astrangia is something that i always have in the school and that is a great filler flower and probably on every single order that I create, they're on there. So that's a little introduction about flowers for you. Um, so again, if you're a beginner or you just love collecting books, have check out the ones that I've talked about today. Get on Instagram, have a look at some lovely accounts as well. Um, and yeah, and just start, start your journey into finding out more about the flowers that are